Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy and his love that he has shown toward us as we are giving people an opportunity uh, to tune in and to come in on our, our station here, if you allow me to say it like that, uh, Facebook Live. We certainly uh, do give God praise. We give God glory and honor uh, for all that he has done. The scripture says it always sticks in my mind, especially when I'm talking to uh, the people of God. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And God is faithful. God is faithful to all those that uh, know him. And he's faithful to those that even don't know him. He's faithful in all things. Because the Lord, it's his character that he be faithful. And his faithfulness is what keeps us alive. His faithfulness is what keeps us going. And because God is faithful, we can depend and trust in him. So through the storms, uh, through the rain, through the sickness, through the pain, we certainly can depend. We can depend on God. And I thank God. I truly do. I thank God for having uh, bestowed upon us and bestowed upon individuals an opportunity to have a relationship with him. Because it's good to have a relationship with the Lord because of what life brings. Life has ups and it has downs and it has turnarounds. But I've noticed down through the years that those that trust in the Lord, those that have confidence in him, they are the ones that are able to endure the storms. In other words, those that uh, have a relationship with the Lord, they're able to endure storms in their lives. They're able to go through ups and downs as opposed to those who don't have a particularly strong relationship in him. Those that don't have a relationship with him, they have the ability to lose their mind. They have the ability to throw in the towel. They have the ability to lead a life of destruction. Some even commit suicide. But those that trust in the Lord, those that have confidence in the Lord, uh, know that, uh, as Paul said, if I live, it's gain, and if I die, it's gain. Uh, we live this life to receive eternal life. And when our job here is over, when our assignment here is over, uh, we'll go and receive glory. We'll go and receive a crown. So those, uh, that's the life of a Christian. That's the life of those that trust in Jesus, knowing that uh, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain. So uh, we thank God that we've built our foundation. Those of us that are trusting in Jesus have built our foundation upon a rock. And he said, when the storms come and the rains beat upon that house, the house shall not fall. Why? Because it was founded upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus. He's a solid foundation. So we thank and praise the Lord, hallelujah, for having a solid foundation. In him, we live and move and have our being. So we want to um, go before the Lord in prayer, once again, my name is uh, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, and we certainly do praise and thank God uh, for you all, and uh, we are affiliate of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith, where the presider is Bishop uh, Lambert Gates, and we thank God for uh, our diocesan bishop of the Nipane States Council, New England, I mean, New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council and our council churches. We thank God for all of them and our diocesan bishop, Bishop Clarence Turner and his lovely wife, Dorothy Turner. And we certainly do uh, uh, want you to pray for all of our council pastors. Pray for pastors everywhere um, and those that have suffered loss on this particular weekend and those that uh, are, are going through uh, particular sicknesses 
and uh, situations, and we want to pray for those that are in Syracuse, those that are in Buffalo, those that are in Monticello, in New York, uh, Rochester, and, and Pennsylvania, and Erie. Pray for all of those, our, our council uh, people, uh, that the Lord will bless and that the Lord will keep us and strengthen us. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We pray in the name of Jesus that you send forth your anointing, send forth your grace and your strength. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Comfort the bereaved families, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and comfort those that are weak and out of the way. And those that are seeking salvation, Lord, we pray that you touch their hearts and their minds to complete the process of salvation, that they call upon the name of Jesus and repent and turn from their sins and get baptized in your holy name. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for this goodness and your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you bless our Bible study on today. In the name of Jesus, send forth a word of strength, send forth a word of encouragement. And Father, we give you glory and honor, grant the door of utterance. In Jesus' name, speak to the hearts of your great people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen and amen. We have um, an excellent lesson on today. And um, the time that we're going to spend on this particular lesson found in Isaiah chapter 49, uh, won't even do this lesson any justice because it has great dimensions in it uh, referring to Jesus Christ and to Israel and to um, the Gentiles, which are us that are non-Jewish. It has great respect unto uh, God's plan of salvation, which he's going to bring together uh, at the culmination in millennium kingdom of Jesus Christ. And he himself is uh, the, the suffering servant. In the scripture, he's styled as the servant of the Lord. And in Isaiah 53 and Isaiah 52 and Isaiah 53, he's going to be introduced as the suffering servant, giving more light into his servanthood. But uh, this lesson on today is found in Isaiah chapter 49, and they have broken it up uh, verses 1 through 10, and then it drops down to verse 22. And our subject on today is a light for the Gentiles, a light for the Gentiles. And uh, Jesus, Jesus is that light, uh, cut right to the chase. Jesus is that light. Uh, he's the light that cometh into the world to, to, to give life and light to every man that would call upon him. Um, the Bible says that Jesus came to his own, and, to, and meaning the Jews, and they received him not. But it says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And uh, that power is reflected in, in the light that Jesus gives, uh, that light can refer to life and it can also refer to uh, enlightenment, uh, uh, a, a understanding and opening of the eyes. Uh, when anybody gets saved, I mean truly saved, and uh, begins to walk with the Lord, they turn from darkness to light and their understanding is opened. And sometimes I remember even in my walk with the Lord, Sometimes, you know, I was five years in, two years in, walking with the Lord, and I said to myself, Lord, I wish I would have known these things that you are revealing and showing unto your servant long before now. My life would have been different. But I can't, I can't, I can't get stuck in that because I got to forget those things that are behind and uh, those experiences that I had uh, when I was unsaved, helped me to get saved and stay saved. In other words, when uh, you know that, hallelujah, when you know that your life was topsy-turvy and then when you come into Jesus, 
You've cast all your cares upon him. You know, you know that there's no turning back, that the world has nothing to offer. And I thank God for those experiences that I had in the world um, that, that I know for of a surety that Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And if you're honest with yourself, you can proclaim the same thing, that Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to you. Hallelujah. So we want to uh, move on in our lesson on today. And our lesson is found uh, once again in the book of Isaiah chapter 49. And um, it goes through verses 10 and then it drops down to verse 22. And our subject on today is a light for the Gentiles. And Jesus is that light. Um, Isaiah uh, 49 and verse number one says, Listen, O isles unto me, and hearken ye people from afar. Uh, the Lord hath called me uh, from the womb, uh, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And um, once again, uh, this particular lesson is all about Jesus. Jesus as the sub servant of God. Jesus as the servant of God. And when it says listen, that means pay attention because what I'm about to say is very important. It says, listen, O isles, and uh, unto me, and hearken ye people from afar. Oh, the, the reference to the isles refers to people who are, in, uh, who are distant, who are far away. And um, it speaks of uh, uh, people who are far away from uh, the place where the individual is speaking, uh, across this world, across the land. And that's the gospel message. The gospel message uh, starts in one place, but it is to be spread throughout the land. God wants his message to be spread throughout the land. When Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry there until they be endued with power from on high, and they would receive the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, and he said, ye shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and on the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, we ourselves who have received the gospel message, the Bible likens us to uh, living epistles to be read of all men. So we should carry this word everywhere we go so that we can spread, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So notice what it's talking about. It's talking about, um, he says, hearken unto me from afar, the Lord hath called me from the womb. Now he's reflecting Jesus here in the scriptures. It's reflecting on the, 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 the pre-birth of Christ. It's reflecting on his call uh, uh, while he was, even before he was in the womb. It's a reflection of that. He says, the Lord have called me, meaning uh, that word called me refers to his assignment. Uh, remember in Isaiah chapter uh, 61, Jesus uh, uh, quoted the scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that verse is quoted in uh, Luke chapter number four. And, and this, this, this refers to the call of Jesus. He was, he was sent to this world to bless you. He was sent to this earth to destroy the works of the enemy. He was sent to bring salvation, reconciliation, uh, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. And that's just his earthly call. And then, uh, then his, uh, his altogether ultimate call is to regather, regather the people, uh, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles all in one to establish a kingdom here upon this earth, to fulfill the assignments uh, that were given by Abraham and also the promises that were made 
uh, back in the book of Genesis and the promises that were made, my God, uh, back uh, when David was given the assignment that said that he was going to, uh, upon his throne, was going to reign a king forever. All of these promises are culminated in Christ, and that's all a part of his call. His call is uh, very simplistic, but it's very multitudinous. Uh, and that's a new word, multitudinous. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It has a lot to it. Thank you, Lord, which time would even not even permit us to go into because it's very, I don't want to say complex, but it's very intricate and, and has great, great, great symbols and understanding. So we see here, eh, glory. So we see here, it says, the Lord have called me uh, from the womb uh, and from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And we know, here's a reference uh, to Jesus. And when I mentioned uh, Genesis chapter 13, I mean, I'm sorry, chapter number three in verse 15, uh, it's made reference to a seed of a woman shall uh, bruise his head and the enemy shall bruise his heel. And this is the first prophecy about Jesus. And we see here that uh, we know that Jesus was born of a woman, a virgin woman. And Galatians chapter number four says that he was made of a woman, made of a woman, made under the law. He was made uh, inside, if you allow me to say it this way, the belly of a woman, uh, God, uh, oh, the Holy Ghost. We often quote this uh, particular passage during Christmas time, that the Holy Ghost overshadowed her and touched her body and a babe was born, uh, a holy babe, thank you, Lord, and came from her womb, born in Bethlehem of Judea, and they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Y'all know the story. <clears throat> and and, and uh, Jesus, uh, when it says he was made under the law, there was nobody uh, living that lived perfectly as Jesus lived and did not, after the, when the law of Moses was established, no one was able to keep that law without breaking it, period. Jesus kept that law without breaking it, period. And he's the only one that, that, that was perfect in that particular sense so that he could be the perfect lamb of God, the savior of the world. Hallelujah. So we see here, um, he says, um, uh, listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar. Uh, the, the Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. Notice verse number two says, And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he uh, hid me. And, and that's a reference uh, to Jesus as the suffering, a servant of God as being a weapon, <clears throat> a weapon against uh, evil, a weapon against the, 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 the hand of the enemy. In other words, this is a good reference to Jesus as being our defender, as our protector, that he would offer his life as a ransom for us and, uh, and, and then fight our battles. He would, he would, he would stand in our place um, to, to, to fight and stand against the enemy. He would uh, share his power, share his glory with us so that we also too can be triumphant, so that we also too can be victorious. And this is a reference to that, that, that Jesus is the, the weaponized servant soldier of God to grant us deliverance, to grant us deliverance against the hand of the enemy, that he himself would fight. He would fight for us and give his life as a ransom for us so that we also, too, can be more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, but that we can be more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We ought to get excited. 
Hey, glory, hallelujah. He had made his mouth as a sharp sword, and that sharp sword is a reference to the word of God. It's, a, to, it's, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and, and again, the Bible references Jesus and that word of God being quick and powerful. And the words that Jesus spoke, him being the uh, anointed prophet, he's able to prophesy and give you a word to encourage your heart. And he's able to strengthen you in the, your time of need. Jesus even taught in the book of uh, uh, St. John chapter 15. He said, you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Um, so we see here, then he said, verse number three, and he said, and, and said unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And this, this particular verse here, Isaiah 49 and uh, verse number 3, uh, for those that were just tuning in, uh, we see here that he says, And said unto me, uh, the Lord, his father, have said unto him, Thou art my servant. Notice, thou art my servant. Thou art my servant to do my bidding. Amen. To, to, it pleased God, the scripture says, to bruise him and to set upon him the iniquity of us all. And Jesus, he, his life was styled as a servant. Notice what he said, the greatest among you are going to be his servant. And remember when Jesus washed his disciples' feet and Peter object to it, and, but Jesus girded that towel, he washed the disciples' feet, and he says, I'm doing this uh, to set an example that you should follow in my steps. So Jesus himself, uh, he uh, was rich, but he became poor in this respect, um, uh, like unto us, to serve us. Now, by no means was Jesus poor. He had a treasurer. He had, he had a bank, thank you, Lord, to help out people that were hungry. But his, the reference is, is, that, is that he himself came and, and gave up his life to serve us so that we can be redeemed, so that we can be saved, set free. And he was doing it because the scripture says, it is written of me in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. Uh, he said, Father, prepare me a body and I'll go down and I'll redeem them. I'll serve them. I'll do your bidding. I'll, I'll serve you as I serve them so that they can live a prosperous life, so that they can be saved, so that they can be set free, so that they can be delivered. So notice then, verse number three, he says, and said unto me, thou art my servant. Jesus is the servant of God. Uh, o Isles, and that O Isles is not a reference to Israel, but it's a re reference to Jesus. And, and it's beautiful when you really uh, compact it together in this respect, that, that Israel was, was, was redeemed from Egypt to serve God, but they never really glorified God in the way that he needed to be glorified as his servant. They, they, they committed sin. They fell by the wayside. They rebelled against God. How many times? But, but Jesus never rebelled, reviled against his father. Jesus never uh, lived a life separate uh, from his father. Never fell into sin. Never fell into condemnation. And he said it himself when he raised Lazarus from the grave. He said, Father, I know you hear me because I always do those things that you tell me to do. And he says, I always glorify you. Hallelujah. And, and this is what that reference is. Uh, o Israel is a reference to Jesus. Notice, he says, in whom uh, I will be glorified. Hallelujah. You remember when Jesus, when he was getting ready to go to the cross and he said, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with thee before the foundation of the world. And the Father responded, I have glorified you and I'll glorify you again. Hallelujah. And this is that glory. 
that, that Jesus walked in. He walked in that light, the light of the glory of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Ah, hallelujah. So that is that reference to Jesus. And then Isaiah 49 and verse number four, it says, Then uh, I said, I have labored in vain. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. Now here's a reference uh, to uh, showing Jesus' uh, humanity in this respect. Showing forth his frustration. Uh, oftentimes you know how it is when you're uh, doing a work for the Lord and the people aren't responding the way that, that you believe or you think they should respond and it causes some frustration. We see it in the scriptures with Jesus when uh, he was uh, about to give his life as a ransom. The Bible said that he wept. He was sitting, he was uh, on the hills of Jerusalem and he wept and he said, uh, talked about uh, gathering Israel like a mother hen would gather her chicks and, um, uh, um, and, and hoping that they would respond, hoping that they would respond to his missions, respond to the word and, 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 and seeing the frustration caused him an emotional response. He wept. Uh, you remember when Jesus was saving uh, Lazarus, raising him from the dead and before he called out uh, the Bible says he wept. He wept not for Lazarus, but he wept for the people's unbelief. It causes frustration. And any leader um, that is a servant of the Lord, when, when we give of our life, we give of our toil, and we see the frustration, uh, we see people not responding in such a way that we would hope that they would respond to the word of the Lord. Uh, uh, it, it causes us to weep and to mourn and to lament. Um, oftentimes, in, in my own opinion, I, I maybe have, I, uh, the Lord has anointed me to preach a good message. And I've said, Lord, my God, the people should be responding to this message. And um, um, I'm doing my best to try to make it plain. And yet sometimes people don't respond in the way that the preacher or uh, the person delivering the message think that they should respond. And because of that, it can cause an emotional reaction because you love the people. You want to see them delivered, and you're in this not as a, a, a hireling, but you're in it as a person that wants to truly see the people saved. And that's what Jesus uh, here was reflecting on. Uh, and that shows you something. Uh, so ministers, I want to say this to the ministers and to the missionary and to those that are laboring in the kingdom of heaven. That, that, that though people may not respond the way that, that you think that they should respond, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Continue to, to labor in the work and the vineyard of the Lord. Because he said that his, your labor shall not uh, be in vain. And the Lord also said that, that you give his word and his word shall not return unto him void. It, but it will accomplish whereunto it is sent. I remember even myself as I digress just for a moment. That an individual invited me to, to and gave me an invitation for salvation to come to their church. And it wasn't until a year later. It wasn't until an acceptable time. It wasn't until a year later that I took the individual up on that invitation. But the individual never gave up on me. He never gave up on me. Thank you, Lord. And when it was time for, for me to respond, um, the, the Lord made a way so that his labor was not in vain. He may have been frustrated. He may have been saying, Lord, uh, look at this knucklehead. What is he doing? Uh, but, but it wasn't my time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And when it became my time, thank you, Lord. The Lord led me to salvation, led me to deliverance. 
So I want to say this as we move on quickly. Because I said, like I said, this lesson is loaded. It has a lot of information in it. And we're just only scratching the surface. Uh, we see here then um, that verse number four, he said, Then I said, then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught. And that just shows frustration. And in vain, yet surely my judgment uh, is with the Lord. Now, here's the encouragement. He says, uh, surely my judgment is with the Lord, my work with my God. In other words, God shall reward you according to how your labor shall be. Uh, in other words, don't, don't be frustrated by the responses of the people. Don't be frustrated by what you see, that it may not be uh, uh, flourishing and, and, and growing uh, as a rate that you think it should be. But don't give up. Don't give in. For God sees your labor. God sees your work. And your work and your labor is the work and the labor that God has assigned you. And God will be with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Now I feel like preaching now. <laughs> but God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you always. Even until the end of the world. So, so, so don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Though it may seem uh, to be frustrating at times. People may not be responding as you would want them to respond at times. But, but, and it may seem like your labor is in vain. But don't give up. I can't stress that enough. God says don't give up. God says don't throw in the towel. God says be patient. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The Lord says, wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. A lot of ministries are folding up. A lot of pastors are throwing in the towel. But I'm here to stand in the gap to tell you not to throw in the towel. Hallelujah. You may eat your last meal and think you're going to die, but God is, has a ram in the bush. God has had some help on the way. Hallelujah. God will send you some help. Thank you, Lord. So stay right there and don't despair. Allow God's timing to operate in your life. He that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. Amen. So we see here then, verse number five. He says, and now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. Now notice, this is, this is beautiful. Uh, God formed Jesus from the womb in Mary's belly uh, to be his servant, to carry out his mission. Amen. Uh, Jesus was born holy. Holy without sin. And, and, and he was formed in the womb to be a servant. A servant to God to serve us here upon this earth. In other words, the scripture says that Jesus was sent to bless you. He was sent to destroy the works of the enemy. And the reason why I'm harping on that is, 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 is because of this. That, that he's the perfect savior to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. He's the perfect savior to help perfect the calling that God has upon your life. All you've got to do is trust him. He's anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. He's anointed to help you. When you receive the gospel of peace, he gives you peace. When you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, he delivers you from the hand of the enemy, from the hand of the fowler, from the hand of the devil, and he restores you. He heals your mind. He heals your emotions. He heals your body. He is a deliverer. He's a forerunner. He's my God. He is your peace. He's your wisdom. He's your strength. Hallelujah. He's your all in all. And that's all wrapped up in the call of Jesus Christ 
and he's, 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 he's built to serve you. He's built to deliver you. Hallelujah. My God. When the scripture talked about uh, when, when all the sheep are together and one goes astray, he leaves the 90 and 9 to go after the one that's been gone astray. And when he captures them and brings them back, everybody rejoices. And that's the servant. That's the good shepherd. That's Jesus Christ. He, he wants to serve everybody because he gave his life as a ransom for everybody. And, and he wants to see everybody set free and delivered. So, so if sometimes the enemy can get it in our minds that Jesus doesn't love us, loose here. Hallelujah. The enemy can put it in our minds that Jesus doesn't care about us. Loose here. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. You got to go back to your nursery rhyme. Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. So we see here. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, notice what he says. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the a wound to be his servant. Notice what he says. Uh, to bring Jacob again to him. Now that Jacob is, is Israel. Uh, to him through Israel. Though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. Now here's a reference to the fact that though Israel uh, right now has been blinded and they have turned their back on the on on the the Messiah uh, Jesus is going to come back to them Paul brings that out beautifully in the book of Romans uh, telling us that 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 uh, don't don't discount Israel and don't uh, say that they're not holy uh, because uh, they are the lump and how can the branch tell the lump that, that they're no good? Uh, thank you, Lord. That's like uh, some people, uh, I'm getting on a pet peeve here. Uh, some people uh, have experienced ministry at a ministry, got saved, sanctified, delivered, and set free. And then they have grown in the sense that they say, well, this ministry isn't holy and I'm leaving it. But that's where they got their first works. That's where they laid their foundation. Thank you, Lord. So how can you say that that church isn't holy if you got your start in holiness there? Thank you, Lord. A lot, and that's foolishness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Unless that church has fallen off uh, from, from, from the walk with the Lord and have been deceived. But if they have not been deceived and have not fallen off from walking with the Lord, uh, an individual who, who's gotten saved under that ministry uh, should not... Uh, say that that ministry isn't right as, as, as when they start leaving. Thank you, Lord. If you want to go, uh, just tell the pastor that your time here is over and that you want to go. Thank you, Lord, because you may want to return. You may want to get back. Thank you, Lord. So don't burn your bridges uh, that you have to go back to. Hey, glory. That's, I, I feel the leading of the Lord to say that. So we see here uh, he says here, um, uh, verse number six, uh, verse number five deals with the returning of Israel. Uh, verse number six, he says, and he shall, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. So he's saying it's a light thing uh, for you to call uh, Israel back into alignment uh, with my covenant. But notice what he says. Uh, and to restore uh, the preserved of Israel. But notice part B of that scripture. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentile. That's us. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So, so, so Jesus, that's why I say this scripture is loaded. Uh, uh, he said it's, it's a light thing that you would say uh, uh, the, the Jews but I'm also going to give you to be a light to the Gentiles to save the Gentiles and the Gentiles are non-Jewish people which are, are, are us 
amen, that are non-Jewish. We are the Gentiles. And Jesus has been given unto us as a light, amen, a light of salvation. And that word light means enlightenment. It means revelation. Uh, God is light, and then there's no darkness in him at all. And he shines in us the light of salvation, and that light of salvation that he shines in us is Jesus Christ. When we receive the revelation that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, and that he rose again on the third day, and that he was given unto us as a ransom. And when we believe in him, we receive the light of salvation. We receive the life of salvation when we believe on Christ. Thank you, Lord. And, and that's why uh, Paul, he took that up uh, because he was an apostle sent directly to the Gentiles to preach Christ and him crucified so that people would get saved. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Jesus is made for both. And, and we see here, I don't want to get ahead of myself in the lesson, but, but, but Jesus Christ reconciled both unto God, the Jew and the Gentile, having destroyed, the Bible says, the middle wall of partition that separated us. Hallelujah. To making himself one twain, one new flesh. Hallelujah. One new people, uh, soul, and trusting in God. And that's us on today. Oh, my God. The Holy Ghost on the inside. I feel it moving. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When we put our confidence and we put our trust in the Lord, Jesus Christ, he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And as I move on, uh, that verse, uh, like I said, this particular chapter, it's loaded. Chapter Isaiah 49, it's loaded. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we see here, Jesus, we seeing Jesus as the servant, as the servant of God, as the servant of God. Notice uh, uh, verse number six, he says, and he said, uh, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation upon the, uh, unto the end of the earth. Now notice, he said uh, that thou shouldest be my salvation. Thou shalt be my deliverer for how long? Unto the end of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's going to come a time uh, where, where this church age is going to end. But Jesus is still going to be God's salvation, God's servant, God's deliverer. And then there's going to come a time, hallelujah, where uh, this heaven and earth is going to pass away. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and Jesus, he's still going to be Lord. Hallelujah. He's still going to be the Christ. Hallelujah. The anointed one. And then there's going to come a time wherein when this world has passed away, Jesus is going to, if you allow me to say it, humble in submission and give everything back to his father so that God can be all in all. And that will be the world without end. And then we'll drop into eternity. My, that's why I say this thing is, this thing is loaded. Hallelujah. And where time shall be no more. So I'm going to stick with Jesus because he has the better plan. I'm going to stick with Jesus because there's a future in him. I'm going to stick with Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm going to stick with Jesus because he is the forerunner. Hallelujah. He is the champion. He is the savior of our soul. He's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. I'm going to stick with Jesus because he's the best thing. Hey, 
glory. Hallelujah. He's the best thing. Hallelujah. That has happened to us. We ought to stick with Jesus. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. We ought to follow after him. There's no other greater plan. There's nobody greater. Hallelujah. Greater than Jesus. So we ought to stick with him. I see why he said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. Hey, glory. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You better stick with Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we got to move on. My God, we got to move on. Verse number 7, Isaiah 49, and verse number 7, it says, Thus saith the Lord, uh, <laughs> the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises. And man despises God, man despises the Son, and men are going to despise you if you live godly, if you live holy. So he says, to whom the nations abhor it, to uh, a servant of rulers. Now notice there, it's talking about Jesus. He is a servant of rulers. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, uh, even the death of the cross. Now notice, he's a servant of rulers. And that, that's a reference to, to, to Jesus is, is in, uh, serving us in relation to our uh, future position when we get in him. In other words, the Bible has declared back in Genesis that we have dominion, amen, that we walk in dominion, that we walk in this kingdom as, as rulers, as, as kings and as priests. Uh, but we lost our, our dominion when Adam and Eve had sinned. And when Jesus came back, part of his mission was to restore us as rulers. Hallelujah. The Bible says uh, that we were, our, our, when we get into Christ, we are seated with him. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, beside him, far above principalities, far above powers. Thank you, Lord. We're seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places as rulers. Thank you, Lord. So we've got to get that in our mind and that Jesus served us. Hallelujah, to restore us back to a position of rightful dominion where now no longer sin should have dominion over us, but that he broke down that power of sin that it should not have uh, strength and power over us, but that we should live and walk in kingdom authority. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. That's why Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me, and he shares that power. He shares that inheritance. Hallelujah. With you and I. My God, my God. You know, I just got a sidetrack here just for a minute when I'm talking about that inheritance, and it's a trade-off. Uh, when we talk about the inheritance of Christ and our inheritance. Because you got to think about it. What did we inherit? We inherit when we were, because we were Adam's offspring, Adam's, thank you Lord, uh, uh, offspring, we inherited sin. We inherited shame. We inherited guilt. Thank you Lord. But Jesus, he takes our inheritance as well. And when he takes our inheritance, he gives us his inheritance. And what is his inheritance? Joy, peace, freedom from sin. Hallelujah. So I don't think it's an even exchange, but Jesus is not looking at to make it even, but he's just looking at you being empowered. It'd be like me, a pauper. I have nothing. I'm homeless. And, and yet I get connected to somebody that has wealth. They can take my paupership. They can take my homelessness. They can take my weakness. Thank you, Lord. But when they take that, they give me what they have. Hallelujah. And that's power. Hallelujah. That's authority. That's wealth. Thank you, Lord. That's walking with Jesus. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord. That's a great exchange. Uh, I preached on the last week. 
Uh, an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. He'll give you beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. He'll take your poverty. Hallelujah. And give you riches. He'll take your sickness and give you healing. Hallelujah. And that's all wrapped up, tied up in Jesus. No wonder they call him a savior. No wonder they call him a deliverer. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Thank you, Lord. So he's here to serve rulers. Notice, he says, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord. That is what? Faithful. My God, he is faithful. Jesus is faithful. And those that despised him, those that rejected him, they're going to see. My God, they're going to see. I hope it's not too late that truly this is the son of God. Truly, this is the deliverer. My Lord, the Bible says, he says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The scripture says they're going to look upon him, the one in whom they pierced, the one in whom they slew and killed. I hope it's not too late. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I hope it's not too late. Ah, oh, my God, my friend, if there's anybody out there that's on the verge of wondering not they should serve Jesus, you should serve him. Now is the time. Now is the acceptable time to give your heart, your mind, your spirit, and your soul to Jesus. You may have missed out on a lot of things in life, but you don't want to miss out on this. I beg you in Christ's stead. I beg you in Christ's stead. Turn to Jesus. Turn to the Savior. Fall on your knees and ask him to forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Because time is winding up and you don't know how much time you have. My God, as we move, as we move on in our lesson, verse number eight. It says, let me finish verse number nine. He says, king shall see, and I mean, verse number seven, king shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because the Lord is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, uh, and he shall choose thee. Thank you, Lord. So verse number eight, it says, thus saith the Lord in an acceptable time, I have heard thee. And in the day of salvation, I have helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the uh, earth to cause to inherit the, the desolate uh, heritages. Uh, that, that just means there that Jesus, he literally fulfilled all the promises of God. It means that Jesus gave his life, thank you Lord, in an acceptable time when all things were ready. Uh, uh, Rome was empowered. Uh, they had the ability to do uh, crucifixion and at the acceptable time, Jesus gave his life uh, as a ransom for you and I. Everything was in order. Hallelujah. And he gave his life for you and I. It was a timely matter. It was a, it was a God sent uh, uh, time that Jesus Christ would come and give his life for you and I. So we see here then, my God, my God. Like I said, this thing is loaded. We ain't got time to go into all of this. I'd spend my, uh, we'd be here to daylight. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Notice verse 9, it says, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth, and to them that are in darkness, uh, show yourself. Thy seed uh, shall feed in the ways of their pastors, shall be in all the high places. In other words, that's a reference to Jesus being a great deliverer. Jesus being a great savior. And notice, and, and, and it comes also to, and it reflects upon the mission of Jesus. 
It reflects on the purpose of Jesus, that he was anointed to heal you. He's anointed to deliver you. He's anointed to save you. Hallelujah. My God, everything you need is in Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's what this chapter brings about. And notice that this chapter deals with Jesus being a servant. He's a servant. So he's here to serve you. I know we worship him. I know we give him glory and honor. But the other part of it is, is that before you can worship him, before you can serve him and give him glory and honor, he needs to serve you to cause you to be in relationship with the Father. It calls you, he needs to give you salvation. He needs to give you, take your sin. Uh, though your sin be as scarlet, he can make it white as snow. Hallelujah. He needs to take your rags and to give you a crown of glory. Hallelujah. A robe of righteousness so that you'll be able to enter into his gates. So that you'll be able to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So, so, so in other words, when you come to Jesus, he has to serve you first. Hallelujah. He has to give of you his salvation. And you have to give in exchange to him all of your filth, all of your dirt. Hey, my God in heaven. And, and you know, if you were to add these things up, uh, why not give them your sin? Why not give them your dirt? Why not give them your filth? Because when you turn your life over to Jesus, he gives you peace. He gives you joy. He gives you righteousness. Hallelujah. He gives you strength. He puts you in your right mind. Hallelujah. He takes away the shame. Hallelujah. And gives you confidence. Gives you boldness. He turns your, 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 your shameful testimony into a powerful testimony unto the Lord. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. You can go around and tell people that you were ashamed at one time that you was a dope dealer, that you was a whoremonger. Hallelujah, that you were a prostitute. But you tell them, when I came to Jesus, just as I was, he delivered me. Hallelujah, from prostitution. He delivered me from drugs and alcohol. He delivered me from lying. He'll turn your testimony into a powerful testimony unto the Lord. That's what Jesus will do for you. Hallelujah, and we've got to move on. I got another five minutes. My God, hallelujah, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 10, it says, Then they, they shall not hunger, nor thirst. See, when people come to Jesus, they, they can be hungry, both naturally and spiritually. But Jesus can satisfy the longing soul. Neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. Test and trials smite us. But, but yeah, his Bible says a man shall be as a hiding place, a shelter in the time of the storm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he that he that have mercy on them shall lead them. And that's what Jesus gives unto us. He, he died because the Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And because of the grace of, of God, which is Jesus, uh, God can have mercy upon us. And then because God can extend mercy upon us, God can have peace with us. And cause us to live in a peaceful relationship with him. Because God is angry at the wicked. God is angry at the sinner. Because there's enmity between God and the sinner. But through Jesus Christ. God, uh, God was in Christ. The Bible says. Reconciling the world back unto himself. Hallelujah. When you get into Christ. You, you receive the ministry of reconciliation that is in Jesus Christ that all your sins would be forgiven. Hallelujah. That, that you will be saved, set free, and delivered. My God. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't want that? Hallelujah. So we see here, then, it says, On them shall he lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And that's a reference, that spring of water is a reference to the Holy Ghost. He said, if you believe on me, as the scriptures have said, 
out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. We ain't got time to go into all that. So drop down to verse number 22. My God. Now here's a reference then um, that the Gentiles will help the Jews. It says, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles. Meaning that uh, the Gentiles are going to be empowered and to set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms and my daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And that's a reference, my friend, to the Gentiles uh, in, the, in the appointed time. We're going to turn and help the Jews to get saved. We're going to turn and help them to be delivered. So uh, that's why I don't look down upon God's chosen people. I'm talking about the Jewish people. Don't turn your back on them. Hallelujah. Because God has sent us to be a light. Hallelujah. And God has sent us a light. And that light is Jesus. He's the light of the world. My God, that lesson was loaded. And I really enjoyed myself teaching it. Thank you, Lord. And I thank God for all of you that have paid attention. Uh, remember that God is for you. And if God be for you, who then can be against you? My God. And I want to pray with you right now. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that this lesson find its lodging in the hearts of your great people, that it encourage, that it strengthen, that those that are not saved, that they would turn unto you, Lord, because you're the author, you're the finisher. Hallelujah, you're the be-all, you're the end-all. Uh, in you we live, in you we move and have our being. And Lord, we pray that the spirit of revelation, that the Holy Ghost would move upon the hearts to cause a, dis, uh, a decision because now is the time of salvation. Now is the time of deliverance. And Father, we pray these prayers in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, hallelujah, that those that, that, that have suffered, those that are going through right now, that they would strengthen their relationship with you, that they would strengthen and set their affections upon you so that they can get over their hurt, so that they can get over their grief, so that they can get over their pain, hallelujah, and look to the hills from whence cometh their help and realize that all of their help cometh unto the Lord. And Father, we pray that you would take their beauty for their ashes, that you would give them strength and honor, that you would turn their testimony into a testimony of victory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My God, hallelujah, there's a powerful anointing. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my soul, my God. And I want to say to all of those that, that, that are of Christian ministries and those that have a desire to sow seed into this ministry, to send forth your, your tithes and your offering on Tidely, uh, download the app. Also look us up, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith. Hallelujah. And, and send and sow seed into this ministry and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. And then you can have the option to mail your tithes and your offering to Christian Ministries 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 165, hallelujah, 08, or you can deliver it through and put it into our drop box. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, my God, I feel the anointing. Thank you, Lord, I feel that if you sow a seed, God is going to bless you. My God, my God, hallelujah, and I'm not talking to try to manipulate you, but the Spirit of the Lord, I know you feel the Spirit of the Lord because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. And, and, and you've got to walk according to God's holy word and stand on God's holy promises. I've gone over my time, but my God, I trust that you'll turn, tune in at 11 o'clock. We're going to, our praise team is assembling right now. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to let them get themselves together. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. We're going to have a time, a time in Jesus. Hallelujah. So put your Sunday best on. Put your Sunday hat on. Hallelujah. Wash your face. 
Hallelujah. Put your clothes on. Put your shouting shoes on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And give praise and glory unto the Lord. And we thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.